back to another great episode of Smoke with the Spizzards. I'm Smoke bringing you guys the daily sports talk. So if you're new here, if you're older here and you haven't already subscribed to the channel yet, make sure you stop what you're doing, leave a comment, subscribe, keep rocking with me. Also, make sure you check out the links down below. The first link is to buy me a coffee to help fuel this channel that you love so much, especially since tis the season of giving. And the second link is to shop the official Smoke with the Spizzards merch collection. Get you the classic tea, the wavy tea, or the Jalen Make It Hurts tea that I've been rocking lately. We need Jalen to make it hurts for the rest of the season. So also turn the notification bells on because the videos are coming live. Boom, 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 boom. And you don't want to miss a single video or a single live stream. So guys, it's way too early mock draft time. But is it way too early? Is it really? You know what I'm saying? Because the season is starting to come to a wrap. You know what I'm saying? So right now, the Eagles, we know, have three first round draft picks in the April 2022 draft. So we have a pick from ourselves, the Dolphins, and the Colts. So as of right now, if the NFL stopped right now, as of week 15, we would have the number 10th overall, the number 11th overall, and the number 21st overall because then darn Colts actually wanted to play, well not really good, but they wanted to play good enough to make our pick love this season. So it's week 15, y'all. It's um four games left in the season. Three or four, just depending on whether you had your bye or not. Y'all know I'm not good with any kind of math. The Eagles have four games left, so I'm assuming these other teams got four or three games left. So basically, we can pretty much gauge that this is where we're going to be picking in the draft. Around 10, around 11, and around 21. Because not much is going to change drastically. It's... It's very unlikely that it's going to be a drastic change um, by the time the regular season ends. So, in my mind, this draft is a defensive heavy draft. Now, last draft we know was a quarterback heavy draft. The draft before was a wide receiver. Get your wide receivers, you know what I'm saying? We picked Rager. Last draft was that quarterback heavy draft. This draft is all about that defense, baby. And you know what the Eagles really need right now? Some darn defense. So in this scenario, we need to walk away with three NFL red tea come September studs. So in this draft scenario and this draft, you know, the draft, free agency builds on the draft. So in my mind, oh, let me tell you guys the rest of our picks. So we have one second round pick, one third round pick, one fourth round pick, three fifth round picks, and a fifth or sixth round pick. So we got hella picks. So this scenario, we're going to go all defense in the first round. We need three defensive ready studs. Our defense is very much giving very much old and very much veteran. And it's time for us to make some turnover on the defense. Now, our offensive line is old, but I'm willing to wait for that second round pick to address the offensive line because we do have some young players on the offensive line that just need to get developed. And we have a lot of young offensive weapons in the running back room, the wide receiver room, obviously the quarterback room. So I feel like later in the draft, we can address offense and even in free agency. Like I said, we're going to have up to about 30, we could potentially have up to about $30 million to spend in free agency. Um, as of right now, we have $14 million, but just depending on contract restructures, we can make up about $30 million to spend in free agency. So we can spend that on a big ticket wide receiver or big ticket whatever we want to do but this draft needs to be first round best available really defensive players so let's get into the draft so with our number one pick now the top two guys in this draft is given very much edge rusher in this draft so the top two players arguably is Kayvon Thibodeau an edge rusher out of Oregon and Aiden Hutchinson an edge out of Michigan now, I do believe that both of those players will be off the board by the time the Eagles pick. Um, they're giving top five picks. And as of right now, I don't think we're going to be cracking the top five picks. So, those guys are going to be off the board. I think they're the two best players in this draft. And we know there's teams that's going to be drafting ahead of us, like um, the Lions, um, a team like the Jags, a team like the Jets that need talent everywhere, and they'll probably go best available, which will be one and two of those guys, and they'll be gone off the board. So we start our pick, hopefully, because this guy is projected to go high too, but hopefully he falls to us, and it's safety Kyle Hamilton out of Notre Dame. So a lot of scouts are saying that Kyle Hamilton is the perfect fit for our zone scheme. He's the number one ranked safety in this draft. 
Now we know Anthony Harris was supposed to come and be a game changer for us, but he ain't changed she. So it looks like we're probably not gonna sign Anthony, re-sign Anthony Harris, and I'm good with that. Insert Kyle Hamilton, red to go. Rodney McLeod, we know is aging, he's getting older, he's battling the injury a lot. It's time we really make some change. Change coming in the safety room. That middle of the defense lacks depth, lacks talent, lacks versatility, lacks athleticism, lacks all that cheat. So let's plug in Kyle Hamilton. So this guy, Kyle Hamilton, they're saying that he's really a, um, you know what they said about Michael Parsons, like linebackers, like Michael Parsons don't come every day, and we see that now. They're saying the same thing about this safety. They say Kyle Hamilton's don't come every other draft. So if he falls to us, this needs to be our first pick. It needs to be Kyle Hamilton. I know we're really looking at defensive line. We're looking at linebackers, but this guy is given best available, and that's where we need to go. We haven't had a floor general, a field general, <laughs> since Malcolm Jenkins. Malcolm Jenkins was the quarterback of our defense. And now Darius Slay is doing a great job of that. Like Darius Slay is our new field general. But we need to get some dominance back in the safety room. And this guy, Kyle Hamilton, can be that for us. We need to start getting some dominance on every level of the field, not just on the D-line, not just in um, at the cornerback position. We need to fill that void at safety. So they say this guy is great in coverage. He's great against the run as well. And like I said, they're calling him one of the most complete safety prospects ever. Okay? He had three interceptions and three pass breakups in the first seven games. He did miss the final five games with Notre Dame with a minor knee injury. So take that as you will. But like I said, this guy is a top, top, top prospect. Now, I do expect those edge rushers to go before him. Uh, but hopefully, if he's there, best available, got to grab him. Now, let's go to our second pick, which will be close. Miami and Eagles, our records are going to be close. So those two, our two first picks will probably be near each other. So here I want to go defensive tackle with DeMarvin Leo out of Texas A&M. All SEC first team he earned this year. Now DeMarcus Leo is a guy that will be able to come in and add some refresh, okay, to the defensive line. The defensive line is supposed to be our bread and butter, but it ain't been that. The defensive line has really been declining. We were dominant. In the beginning of the season, Javon racking up sacks, Fletcher racking up sacks. Now we ain't sacked, gee, in weeks, okay? Derek Barnett is not what we want him to be. Fletcher Cox is old, 31 years old. Javon Hargrave, we still like him. But like I said, the, the defensive line just hasn't been consistent. Javon Hargrave, I'm sorry, he hasn't been consistent. He was dominant in the beginning of the season. And again, we're not getting any younger. Um, Ryan Kerrigan, again, 33 years old. He's on a one-year deal. But as you can see, we did get some young players, uh, Marlon and Taryn Jackson. We did get some young players um, last draft to come up and develop, which is great. Those were late rounders. Those guys still need development. Um, but we need, like I said, instant pro-ready guys, and this guy is one of them. So Lil, the special thing about him is he has the ability to line up anywhere. 4-3 tackle, 3-4 at defensive end. And his interior pass rush is just as locked down as he is on the outside. He had eight and a half sacks this past season. And he's very good at stopping the run as well. They're saying he's very athletic. He's a size mis mis mismatch on the interior. He has an explosive first step. <laughs> Watch them feet though on that line. You know what I'm saying? We got enough problems with Derrick Barnett. But they're saying he got explosive first step and great speed. Again, they're saying that this guy is a game changer for any defense, and they're really saying game changer for a team as a whole, you know what I'm saying? That's coming from the Texas A&M department, so you know they're going to speak their guys up, but I don't believe them, okay? Because like I said, this guy's all SEC first team, all SEC. Y'all know the talent that's pumping out the SEC, and this guy's first team, so let's get him on the Eagles. Now lastly, with our third round pick, which is projected to be lower because of the Colts, you know what I'm saying? So best available linebacker right there, that's where we go, best available linebacker. Now, if, if if there's two dominant defensive tackles in this draft, and I'm saying defensive tackles over defensive end because I feel like we have more depth at defensive end than we do at defensive tackle. If this guy is off the board, DeMarvin Leal, or the other top defensive tackle is off the board, then at the number two pick, we should go best available linebacker and then adjust later. But this is a perfect scenario draft. You guys know how it goes way too early. 
So at number pick three, we go best available linebacker. So that's Devin Lloyd from Utah or N'Kobe Dean from the University of Georgia. Now, Devin Lloyd is supposed to be better than N'Kobe Dean, but you know how it is. They're both first round talent. Now, the reason that Devin Lloyd is separated from N'Kobe Dean is because of size. Now, Devin Lloyd is 6'3", 235. N'Kobe Dean is a little bit smaller, 6'2", 225. But N'Kobe Dean is heavily praised for his speed. Obviously smaller, usually more speed. They're saying he's the fastest linebacker in the draft. He has a 91 pass rush grade and a 90 coverage grade, according to Pro Football Focus. He's a sideline to sideline linebacker. Now, Devin Lloyd, they're saying that he's super strong, he's great stopping the run, and also defending the pass. So you pretty much just taking your bet with those two guys. I wouldn't be upset with any of those guys. We haven't had a sideline to sideline linebacker in a while, so I do like that about Kobe D. Also, I like N'Kobe D playing at Georgia SEC. They always producing great talent. You can't really go wrong with them Georgia boys. So I know that's not really a good way to measure, but I mean, hey, if you gotta take your pick, I would take someone that's been playing in the SEC. So whichever one of those guys are available, we need to go best available linebacker. We haven't taken a linebacker in the first round since the 70s, and it shows our linebacker room has been very much sucky. It's time to change that G. Our linebackers have sucked forever, and we haven't drafted one in the first round in forever. Now, what's not clicking? One plus one equals two. It's time to make some change. You see what Michael Parsons was able to do, turn that whole Cowboys defense around. And y'all know I wanted Michael Parsons. And yeah, I'm salty, but whatever. So y'all, that's my way too early mock draft. Like I said, go all defense. This is a defense heavy draft. Let's snag what we can get. We got three first round picks. We need three ready NFL ready guys. Like I said, let's turn around the safety room. Let's turn around the linebacker room. Let's add a refresh on the defensive line and get three NFL starter ready guys. And then whatever other needs we need to fill, we can fill in free agency with that cash money we'll be able to spend. But y'all let me know what you think. Make sure you like this video, leave a comment, subscribe, shop my links down below, buy me that coffee, and I'll talk to you guys next time.